Hello and welcome to Business Insider with Mario Tonaguzzi on YYC Business. Joining me today is Vince Guzzo, who is a well-known entrepreneur in Canada, also a judge on Dragon's Den uh, television show. Thanks for joining us today, Vince. Thank you for having me again. Well, we're going to talk a little bit about entrepreneurship in these challenging times. Uh, let me just start, uh, Vince, by asking you how important uh, and why is it it's so important, especially now, uh, for people to support local business? Well, you know, I think it's important that we all realize that at the end of the day, you know, charity starts at home and, and, and local businesses are our home, right? So yeah. uh, the first people to give to our community are our local entrepreneurs, to our hockey teams, to our peewee teams, you know, to whatever uh, the society. And then you have to remember the local businesses are closer to the, you know, to the heartbeat of a community, right? So when something happens, they're the first ones on the ground, they're the first ones who actually have a direct connection with the community per se versus a, you know, a Walmart or a, you know, Costco. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the CFIB uh, just the other day had a survey showing that that uh, uh, more people were were shopping at the big box stores, right, uh, than uh, supporting local. Um, do you think that message is uh, is not ringing true with uh, with Canadians right now? Um, so, and if so, why? So I think the real problem is always the same, right? It's a question sometimes of convenience. So you know, the large box has everything there. It's a one stop shop. Yeah. Um, and then sometimes because of the huge volume they may have. They can get things at a lower, you know, a lower price. And therefore, while still making a bigger margin than local businesses are making on goods, they can still sell to you cheaper. So I think that at the end of the day, you know, it's a uh, um, shopping local is a bit the uphill battle that, you know, uh, saving the environment has. Uh, even though we're all good intentioned and we actually all want to save the environment because we see the importance of it. But I think that somewhere and somehow you know, we always seem to forget and we don't always remember uh, to do what's right versus what's easy. Yeah, and, I, and I, I think a lot of Canadians don't realize it. You know, they see obviously the, you know, won't mention names, but the big box score, uh, stores and they hire hundreds of employees, whatever, right? But when you look at the, the, the whole picture, the small business in Canada is the major driver of employment. Uh, it's not those big companies, right? Well, not only is it a, a bigger driver of employment, it's also a bigger, uh, 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 it's somebody who contributes a lot more to the overall tax uh, uh, bills that are being paid yeah. <laughs> versus somebody who's offshoring everything, right? I mean, I mean, it's not a secret. I mean, if I set up, you know, an Irish version of Cinema Guzzo and funnel all my money there, I'm paying 12%, if that, uh, yeah. versus by staying in, in Canada and by being a local uh, uh, business in Canada, I'm paying 28%. It, that makes a big difference when it comes to the services that we're being offered and, and you know, and, and what we expect from our government. So, like I said, you know, it's, I think people need to just always remember that, you know, charity has to start at home. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about uh, entrepreneurs during this time and this difficult period that we've been, what, all, a year and a half basically uh, uh, at right now. Um, how important is it for, for businesses uh, to identify opportunities and emerging trends out there? So I would tell you, most entrepreneurs will self-regulate themselves, right? They will, they will impose upon themselves this obligation to always try and find the next best thing for their industry, for their business, and be the one to pivot in that segment so that, you know, they have a... a uh, a heads up on that one. I think a pandemic does nothing else, but it kicks you in the butt and it forces you to do it. Whether yeah. whether you think you've got years ahead of you to get it done or not, it pushes you to do it immediately, right? So it's not a secret. You and I have talked about this in the past. We were, you know, looking at going into the retail food business and, you know, and it was a slow, progressive process. You know, because of the pandemic, all of a sudden the popcorn came out, the chocolate came out and a whole bunch of stuff is going to come out uh, by, before the end of 2021, that everybody's going to say, wait up a minute, I thought he was in the movie business, now he's in the food business, because that's how important that segment of our business is going to become. Yeah, yeah, so it's uh, it's really important to do that, right? I, I think sometimes, uh, maybe recessions and bad times aren't bad sometimes, are they? Well, they are, for overall, they're yeah. bad, but, but, I, but I think it's in a time of crisis, 
uh, you know, that innovation uh, 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 is usually developed. Uh, um, you know, and, and I remember a priest once telling me, I told him, I said, you know, I don't get it. You know, I, I studied an hour and I prayed nine hours and, you know, and, and, and I didn't do well on my exam. He says, why don't you try the opposite? Try studying for nine hours and you pray for one. Let's see how that goes. Right. And so ultimately what happens is when you're being pushed and that's what a crisis is. Right. A crisis yeah. puts you in a difficult position. It puts you in a position where whether you like it or not, you're going to accept the change that's coming. And therefore, it's pushing you to innovate. It's pushing you to be the best you can be. Uh, you know, pandemics are like competition. You know, it's like going to the Olympics, right? I mean, once you're there, why does one win versus another? Why is one more resilient versus another? Why does one not crack under pressure versus another? Yeah. The pandemic is a test for all entrepreneurs. It is our Olympic. We don't want it too often. We don't want it every four years. Yeah. Don't get me wrong here, but it is, you know, uh, resilience is the key to success in entrepreneurship. And I think the pandemics just weed out, you know, the people who are no longer able to be resilient. Well, you know, it's interesting though, you know, and I've talked to other people about uh, this uh, in, in the recent past is I think a lot of people were expecting a lot more businesses to close uh, permanently. Right. Uh, and, and, and not to downplay anything. Uh, yes, there were the number of businesses that have shut down, uh, shut their doors for good. But, you know, uh, I, I think it's kind of surprising at how many have survived all this. Do, do you agree with that? Yes and no. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. In the middle of a pandemic, everybody is more lenient. Everybody is more tolerant. So banks were more accepting and more open to delaying, you know, payments and forgoing uh, uh, various fees, et cetera. The government came in and helped some industries in some ways or some other. So I think everybody, you know, in French, the expression is everybody put the l'eau dans leur vin. Everybody diluted their wine a little and said, okay, you know, we're all <laughs> going through this again. But ultimately you have to remember, there's been a lot of subsidies, but there's been a lot of loans that were yeah. taken out, right? And guaranteed loans and so forth. So now you're going to end up with a lot of businesses with exactly the same business, exactly the same, uh, 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 you know, revenue stream, exactly the same revenue amount, but with $20 million more of debt. So now you're saying to yourself, okay, my balance sheet has been hit and I have nothing to show for it. It's not that, you know, it's $20 million more, but I have $20 million of equipment. I don't, I, I just basically burned through $20 million of cash flow. That's where, yeah. and so I think the, the worst is to come. I, I think a lot of people are still going to try, but I think a lot of those people who took out those EDC, BDC loans, you know, because the government put, set them up as an emergency. I think a lot of those people may foreclose because it may just be easier to wipe out that debt, right? I mean, it's a lot of people are talking about the movie industry. And I suspect that in the top 10, you will have three or four of them that will say, you know what, let's just file and let's just wipe out the debt and we'll start fresh, right? Yeah. Now, it's great for the balance sheet. I think a lot of people need to realize that when you do that, there's banks that are taking a hit and, you know, not a lot of people are going to cry about that one, but there's a lot of shareholders taking a hit. And yeah. that now, you know, uh, uh, um, you know, mom and pops all over the, all over the country. Yeah. Do you think, you know, everything seems to be pointing in the right direction right now, everywhere, you know, restrictions being, you know, eased uh, a lot uh, or, or, or here, like here in Alberta done, uh, you know, or basically done with the restrictions as of yesterday. Uh, vaccinations up, uh, et cetera. Uh, so everything's moving in the right direction. However, if things should go astray, uh, do you think from a business perspective, this country can afford another wave, another lockdown? You know, I'm going to tell you like this. I'm just hoping that the politicians we elected the last election, who I believe mismanaged the pandemic in, in multiple ways, um, I'm just hoping they learn from the last 14 months. And I'm hoping they're gonna face wave number three or four, depending on what part of the country yeah. we're in, uh, a different way. And I, and I think they're gonna, you know, I think everybody has to realize, and, 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 and you know, we use this expression often, well, Mr. Gutso, you know, they tell me it's a pandemic. What would you have done? Just, like, you know, you don't plan uh, uh, um, two days after the earthquake. You try and plan an emergency plan before the earthquake happens. Which means what? Which means if a lot of people really sit down and reflect, the only reason why we had to shut down businesses is because our Medicare system or our healthcare system mm -hmm. did not and was not adequately uh, uh, supported 
oh, for the last 30, 40 years maybe, mm-hmm. to handle the influx of people, right? And and for some reason, you know, we we didn't check you know, the uh, uh, the expiration date on some of the medications, some of the equipments we had, and all of a sudden we ended up, oh my God, nothing's good here. We got to re... So that kind of amateur uh, attitude's got to change. I, I think at the next elections, uh, at every level, municipal, provincial, and federal, mm-hmm. I, I, you know, I would invite Canadians to vote for the person that they want to see run the country in a, in a time of crisis and not during a vacation because the truth of the matter is you never know when the crisis is going to come and you want you know you want a war general during the war but yeah. you've got to have him ready before the war right so it's fine to have a peacetime general but you know you're going to need a war general if a war uh, uh, breaks out so and that's what we want i i think it's pretty clear that you know i was a vocal uh, critic of my premier uh, uh i'm happy to see that you know a friend of mine jason is is doing great in Alberta and is, is you know, taken control again and, and has uh, uh, removed the restrictions because he realizes, and I think a lot of us are realizing that physical health is important, but mental health affects our physical health and it's just as important. And, you know, the biggest problem we're going to face from this pandemic is going to be the, you know, the mental health impact that our kids, our teenagers and ourselves have gone through. There's a lot of stress out there. There's a lot of anxious people a lot the suicide, the numbers of suicides are through the roof yeah. even though nobody wants to talk about it the truth of the matter is it is a it has been a trying time and it will continue to be for years to come so i'm hoping that because you know even though it wasn't publicly uh, you know screamed on the rooftops about the suicide rates i know that the politicians know what those rates are right now and i'm hoping that they will have learned something from the last 14 months if they haven't, shame on us if we even want to consider them again, you know, coming the next election. All right, super. Thanks, uh, Vince, for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, super. That was Vince Guzzo, who is the uh, well-known entrepreneur in Canada, also a judge on Dragon's Den. This has been Business Insider with Mario Tanaguzzi on YYC Business. Thanks for joining us today. <laughs>